Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm out on the S18 and in this video I just want to quickly give, go over my basic shock settings for the S18. Um, I, had, I, I posted a question on one of my previous videos asking if anyone would be keen for um, just a quick overview of the shock settings that I use for on my S18 and just explain a little bit of, around the shock so you can get an understanding of how the thing works. This is not for advanced riders at all. I know you guys all know exactly how the shock works. This is more for guys that just bought the S18 and they just want a base setting on their shock. Just to get started, you know, as soon as you know about the weight in the rider and how the shock um, operates, then you can go and adjust the shock to your liking. But just want to give you guys a, a basic guide of the shock of the S18. But first, I'm going to go and uh, and find a spot where I can uh, uh, put the wheel against the tree, and then I'll show you uh, around the wheel, and then I'll also show you. This, um, I'll list the shock settings that I use. So let's go. Let's just quickly go over the wheel quickly. You know, I've got my lift handle. I've disabled the lift switch in the handle. This you can do via the app. So if anyone is interested in in uh, in where that is set please drop a comment below and i will let you know how to disable this so the handle is up the reason why i ride like this is just if i need to jump off the wheel and uh, need to uh, catch the wheel then it's nice and easy big old comfortable handle to actually uh, grip onto the wheel and control the wheel really uh, also when you want to get off um, it just it just sort of works even if you want to push it downstairs or upstairs i use it like that i don't turn the wheel off i don't use the lift switch at 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 all okay so let's get started with the shock settings so this is an air shock as you guys can see there it's a uh, a dnm air shock this is a aoy 38 i think it's rc i think but yeah this is the shock it's it's an it's an air shock it's not a coil over like the big s20 so um it's just very basic again like i like i listed in the previous video they use an air shock usually if i compare this for um in the mountain biking realms the air shock lighter uh, 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 uh not a lot of massive travel um, and so it's more for like cross country and uh, lighter free riding bikes. As soon as you go coil over, then it becomes uh, more for downhill free ride. Um, and what do you, they, they call it like, like, like more free riding, hard hitting trails, longer travel. Uh, it can support more. And you've got more adjustment as well. There's, there's like an extra adjustment, uh, adjustment you can do on a coil shock compared to an air shock. Okay, so let's start at the top. You've got your lockout switch. So if you don't want the shock to move up and down or super very little, this is again what they use in mountain biking. If they go up a hill, then they um, uh, lock out. So there's no uh, bounce in the back of the of the mountain mountain bike. And then as soon as they want to go downhill, they unlock it again. And that's all um, pretty much um, how they get the most what do you call it the most uh, power into the into the pedals so the next thing is the top chamber they call it the main chamber that's the top thing and that's the lower one so that's the negative chamber top chamber, negative chamber and then this is your um, little sag rubber ring that you use to set the sag on the shock okay and then as you can see just behind the lockout here yeah? as you can see there's a uh, there's a there's a red ring there right in there now that red ring is uh, the rebound adjuster okay so what i like to do is I, I i always try and make sure that this area of my wheel is fairly clean and also i oil and make sure that the um that the parts where there's actually movement on the shock is moving freely and the easiest way to do that is to um, let the air out of the top um, and the bottom chamber the main and the negative chamber let the air out and then push the wheel through the whole um, action of the of the travel so then then you can lay the wheel on its side and you can really like uh, um, feel if there's any 
any um, uh, uh, sticky points in the whole action because you can then the shock just moves free, freely i like to put a little uh, drops of oil um on the on the parts where where it actually moves just to keep it keep it um well lubricated not a lot just a tiny tiny bit okay so when you're ready to fill up the shock then you're gonna basically um empty both chambers and then you're gonna drop the shock to the lower setting so with the shock on its lower setting there's going to be a big gap here okay so this is where you put that uh, block that plastic block in so it keeps the shock compressed okay so now the shock is uh, um, fully deflated the block is in then you basically go into here and uh, um, i fill up the negative chamber first and then i fill up the positive chamber um, so i put in for my settings, I'm a 75 kilogram rider and I usually use it for trail riding. I put in 90 PSI in the negative and I put in 220 PSI in the main chamber. And then for the rebound, there's 15, there's, there's 30 clicks between the one side and the other side. Now I ride it on 15 clicks in the middle. I sometimes go... Um, uh, 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 a, a few clicks to the faster one if it's very uh, uh, bumpy trail so that the um, so that the sh shock extends quicker if you go to the slow side um, slow means that it when you when you take a hit so if you if you, if the shock compresses it takes a long time to a long time to to extend again if you, if it's on the fast side then it's gonna it's gonna go open and close much, or it's gonna extend much quicker. So if you've got um, loads of bumpy bumpy roads, um, and you want to try and keep the tire as much as possible on the road, um, sometimes the bumpy or the quicker is better. Um, if you want to, if if you do big jumps and big hits where you want the want the shock to compress and then slowly come up again, then you use the slower setting. But I keep mine on 15 and maybe two or three clicks to the faster 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 side depends on the terrain and that's sort of the nice thing about these shocks you can customize it to your liking so how did i come up with that uh, pressure so i will actually drop up here i will i will uh, uh, put a little um a little thing that i found on king song's website of the pressures that they suggest because the book that comes with the s18 in in my wheels book this was the gen gen one wheel um, so the first batch it was a it was the a manual because i did check on on their website it's the manual for the shock um, in a mountain bike environment because the mountain bike environment is totally different to running it in this that i found because the pressures on the in the in the book um, for a mountain bike setup is much lower to the pressures that they suggest on their website, um, and I'll link that card in in here on the top so you guys can see. So yeah, that's it. 75 kilogram rider, uh, 220 psi in the top, in the negative chamber. I'm running 90, and I'm running 50, 15 clicks. So I'm in the middle, dead center. Um, between the fast and the slow okay and i don't ride it at lockout sometimes i ride it at lockout anything is when i ride on the road because there is still a tiny bit of give but um, if you want a higher a higher ride just for the road then 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 you can use the lockout the lockout is pretty much more for mountain biking um, as i said if you want to go up a hill cross country and you want all the power in the in the back of the uh, uh, mountain mountain bike you lock it you you lock the shock out going downhill flick it unlock it get all the action so you can cruise down the hill as fast as possible okay so i hope you guys enjoyed that bit of information and i hope it does help someone um just want to give you more you see sort of i don't know how your guys's boots look like the dust covers here and how they are working are they sticking are they staying in there are they riding up because mine i had to hot glue mine down 
because it keeps on clipping out and then going going up and yeah again you know i just clean clean the um these uh, 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 rods that go uh, that go down the suspension arms just keep them clean um they to be honest this wheel really keeps um the the dust and the dirt off the section i don't clean the wheel a lot um the, the main um cleaning problem is this mud guard on the inside and i wish this mud guard yeah that the wheel runs in, into was wider and bigger and gave more clearance to the current stock tire just because here in the uk there's a lot of mud and it just cakes up in there and it just it is i i do have a way now to clean it but it just it's just a pain to keep that thing clean and sometimes you know riding the wheel in the in this like dry mud stuck in there and everyone looks around they're like and what is what is wrong with that thing it looks like the motor is falling apart but yeah oh one thing i want to just tell you guys about the sag the sag um rubber setting so this is again um to set how much this the shock compresses when you're on the on the um on the on the wheel so you want it to be if you're on the wheel you want it to sag about that much and how you test it you run it all the way up you stand on the wheel just stand normal get off the wheel i'm going to put it next to the and there it shows you it shows you your sag so that's that's for my weight that's the sag so if you put more pressure you're gonna into the shock you're gonna have less sag and if you put less pressure in the shock then you're gonna have more sag and you mustn't have well as far as i understand and this is again from from my mountain biking days that i still still do a bit of mountain biking but if you if you ride it like that you're going to have no suspension um, the higher you ride it it's going to be a more reactive shock so you it needs to be have a little bit of sag um, at least that or a little bit like mine a little bit further down so it can so it can really give you the most travel you you want the shock to go in and you want the shock to go out to almost well where the where the sag is so you get most of the travel okay so that's sag um please if you do have any further comments about how you've set up your shock um please drop it in the comments below um if you um are an advanced rider or mid rider and and you found the best settings for your shock again please give me um uh, uh, give give a uh, rider weight um your main chamber negative chamber and your rebound settings it might help new riders to get an idea all the guys has got s18s if you comment below to share your um, rider settings on your s18 it will help other riders to find the video and also get a good start it's all about sharing this knowledge these things are absolutely brilliant the more people that can ride it the better okay guys i hope um, this video was useful if it if it was useful to anyone please give it a thumbs up um, and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to the channel and i'll make many more videos i've got a review of the wrist guards coming in soon and i also have a review of the liat uh, shin and knee pads coming in soon just the weather needs to be a little bit warmer because i've been using them but um, i want to give you guys some feedback on that as well but yeah guys thank you very much for watching and thank you for all the subscribers that have joined the channel there's going to be many more videos coming and i am super excited about all these new wheels becoming available um, it does take a bit of time as we see this with the s20 there's the problem with the fire and this and that and the other and the new master and then the euro and you know the the v12 with the problems and the high torque coming in i think there's such a lot of um uncertainty all over the place i, th I think you now i was speaking to one of the guys this this morning and he was saying like he's actually just going to hang back he's gonna he's got a wheel in mind he's gonna wait for the wheel to probably be batch one or two 
and then only start uh, looking at upgrading his his wheel now that's perfectly fine but sometimes you want to you, you like and looking forward to a new wheel and you want the first batch to be sorted and all i can say i just hope the manufacturing guys say let's just make the stuff rock solid because there's more and more people using these um, getting into riding electric unicycles and uh, there's going to be more people wanting a a more feeling of when they buy it it is it is more rock solid um so yeah i just i just hope they can get all these things sorted because i, I love the s8 uh, the s the s20 i love my s18 as well i love the sherman i see the sherman max is getting a really good reviews as well and um and then i you know i love that v12 look and feel but i would like the high torque version because it's got the, st the stock of the knobby of the knobby tie in so so i'm still in two minds do i go for the s20 or do i go for the v12 high torque i would like to ro ride both and see how they feel um just to just to see if it's going to work for the type of riding that i do okay guys Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.